Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Sports Department Podcast. A little bit of breaking news here. Um, our first time we're kind of doing like a breaking news segment. I think we did like a New York sports one kind of early in our debut as the Department Podcast. But we're the Sports Department Podcast. I'm Stephen Clark, jumping down. So again, Jesse Norman here to break down all the recent WWE news that just came out about WrestleManias for this year and the next two years. I'm just going to get right into it because um, there's a whole other podcast that you guys are about to listen to right now about when we talk about everything else outside and inside the ring from the past week in wrestling. But um, news broke the tonight, Saturday, January 16th. It's 9.45 right now. This is about an hour or two after this has just been announced in this little role play type thing that they just released WWE with Triple H and Stephanie McMahon kind of being like anchors of the show and like our TV news classes. <laughs> I'm not saying much. Um but um they're go they went to Roman, Sasha and John Cena who were like correspondents for each of the WrestleMania and we're going to start with the first one really quickly. Um it has been rumored for months now for a little while that WrestleMania 37 would be coming back to Tampa Bay because of the whole COVID situation being obviously really big then and really big now. But WrestleMania 37 will take place in Tampa Bay on Saturday, April 10th and Sunday, April 11th at Raymond James Stadium. Two nights, too big for one night again. How are we feeling about this, fellas? Well, this is just to make right, obviously, because of missing out on COVID. The interesting thing is that they're going to two nights for this one. I you love know? it. I love it. Now, looking at the other dates does for that mean does that mean that fans are gonna be there? Like can think, fans buy a know. two like a one day so. ticket, a two day ticket, or, it, it or what I, I think they're gonna days. have they're gonna have fans, I think, on at least twenty five percent capacity. Or what I think they might be I doing. Think, but if that's the case, I think they need to release the cards in advance per night way yeah. it, like ahead of time yeah, if you're so that like you know yeah. what night what night you want to go to but yeah you know in theory you know the good person to me won't be like oh they're doing it so you know if you go one night you can't go the other night so more people can go and see wrestling you know it's just all it's yes. all money but yeah. it's it's honestly their way of also making up for lost funds because charging two nights you essentially get double capacity when you're only running at a quarter so in theory you're making 50 percent at the gate then there yeah I, I like the idea of having different fans. Also, you dates. jump the tickets up some. Exactly. Well, that's, well, that's the thing. Well, that's the thing. Well, that's the thing. You're at 25 capacity. You can run it 25 both night, but charge double what face value would be. And there you go. You make your gate back right then and there for yeah. a standard show. And the thing is, people will still pay for them. Oh, that's they the absolutely will, part. just because they haven't been there in a year or so. People t- people are at the Bills game right now where people were scabbing tickets for $10,000. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so, this year, you know, we're not talking Yeah, about, like, people will go. It'll go hand in hand with this year's Super Bowl as well. This year's WrestleMania and Super Bowl will be the highest price per ticket, honestly, just because of the limited amount of seats there will be yeah. available. Um, I agree, but um, I like the idea of having different fans for different nights, but that just kind of like runs the risk because COVID's still around too. Like having yeah. diff- say and different fans in different seats. You never know if something's lingering around the stadium. Either. Not getting too political, but DeSantis is an idiot uh, in Florida. So <laughs> yes, yes. the situation mm-hmm. will not be under control there. So, you know, someone in our group chat brought up how they should only limit to inside Florida so you don't have people coming from around the world, around the U.S., coming to Florida, going to a hot spot, which it still very well could be at that point. Um, you know, and possibly bring it out, and who knows how much you know comes with it from there. But you know, it's Vince McMahon and Rick DeSantis running the show, and who have the say of how many people can actually Yikes. go there. So that's a scary thought. Very, very scary. But Honestly, very, I yeah. if if it's a low enough number that they're allowing in, and if it's like clearly a premium type thing, how much is why same? not just like rent out a a hotel floor or like however Several many hotels. for like a week or two. And just in, just include it in like the package, the, the like Sean do Payton like a whole experience. weekend kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Um, but that's do, awesome. Do that I kind of love thing. that way. They're quarantined. I I agree. Then, I then think that's a run smart idea. Risk. But I love having fans back at wrestling shows. They're the people that make the show special. I'm trying to um, find a rough estimate of how many people will be at the Super Bowl this year because it's the same stadium. Smart. Oh, you're right. It is the same stadium. Just to so, kind of get a... So we're going to get a really good estimate on in February yeah. what we're going to see at WrestleMania, plus, of course, a couple floor seats and all that stuff because, you know, that's going to be the most... So that's Tampa the, averaged right about 14,483 fans this season in the regular season for its eight home games. So okay. I'd assume it would be around that for WrestleMania... And the super, probably a little bit beefed up more for the Super Bowl, but probably around that. So maybe we see a twenty thousand. 
which Raymond James Stadium is just under 70,000. That's basically so that's a, a basketball arena. That's about a third, point. give that's, or take. That's mm-hmm. fine. If, if they can do it safely and everything goes to plan and, and nothing you know, and there's breaks one thing, out. Like I'm we're watching it. the Bills game as it's happening now. Yes. You know, they don't have the upper deck opened. You know, they should open the upper deck and really just spread everyone the hell out. I agree. And I, I think, you know, we see for football where the first few rows are tarped off and no one's near it. There shouldn't be anyone within like 50 feet of the ring. Yeah, I'm cool with that too. No, anything to keep the wrestlers safe, anything to keep the fans safe, anyone who works, uh, any of the production guys, whatever the best way to set keep up some plexiglass where they have to go. Let's set up that. what? Plexiglass around the ring. There you go. Perfect. But sign, sign Justin to a contracting deal. He'll, he'll get the job done. Um, mm. <laughs> some overtime money. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but, no, but that's cool that they're doing two it's nights. Cool. It's you cool. Know? Um, yeah, but that's this year. But they did something different also. They never really announced future WrestleManias a year or two years in They advance. usually do it when it's the current WrestleMania. They exactly. say next year we're coming to yeah, X, we're, Y, and we're Z. We're in January right now. Yeah. Yeah, WrestleMania is in April. Well, I have a so, theory of why they did it this way. Huh? I have a theory of why they did it this way. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But WrestleMania 38, which they announced for next year, April 3rd, 2022 at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. They love going back to Texas. California, Texas, New York's their big, biggest markets. Oh, that's the biggest market in oh, Florida, too, of course. Biggest markets for WWE. They're coming back to Texas. Big it four. looks like this. The it's, the, it's the four biggest you know, shows. The big four. The big they're, four. There you go. You're they're right. They're basically on mm. a four-year loop now at this point. So honestly, yeah. after Hollywood in 2023, 2024, very well could be back in New Jersey. Uh, they'll they'll if, take my money. If, so they don't, that's if, they, if they don't go out to Vegas uh-huh. just to play out in that stadium, which they probably will. Honestly, that's perfect for Mania 40, Vegas. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Um, but yeah, we're, we're back in Texas. They have the same all oh, same logo basically as thirty two and twenty five. Yeah, just they're, the not, they're, not getting, star. they're not getting any more creative anymore. Like this they're, is this is the capacity. They're of not. It. Um, even the thirty seven logo for this year's WrestleMania is still basically similar. They changed it up a little bit. I'm they added they a skull. It. They added they a skull. They changed it a little. Yeah. Um, I hope Kevin Owens jumps off the pirate ship or something. He does something <laughs> silly. Again. Um, but do you want to get into your theory that you were talking about? Yeah. So I feel like they already had the contract. So this year was supposed to be. LA, right? Yes, yes. So everyone would have thought, okay, Tampa this year, LA next year, and then wherever after that. I feel like the reason why it's Tampa, Dallas, and then LA is they didn't have a, a site booked for LA yet, and they were already contractually obligated to Dallas. So rather than move that around, they just pushed LA back to fit in before scheduling another one to move more schedules around. So I feel like that's why it's the gap of Dallas in between each other now. That, that makes sense to me. Um I can't argue with that at all. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. But you just said it right there. Then they announced the next next year's WrestleMania in 2023. WrestleMania 39, April 2nd, 2023 from the brand new SoFi Stadium. Hopefully that's not the first time we're seeing fans inside SoFi Stadium. I really hope it's not. I really hope the Chargers and the Rams get fans in years, there first. be two years from now. Hey, you don't know the way this is going. There's a new strain of this nonsense going on right now. So you don't know the way it's going. But Inglewood, yeah. California. Um, WrestleMania 39. Wow. It's, it's going to WrestleMania 40. That's it's going to look nice in that stadium though. It's going to be fun with the nice new led board. And especially since there. it's like open in the one end of it, like it's not fully enclosed, but yeah. the glass roof is nice. I, I like SoFi. Me too. Um, LA though, WrestleMania is going back to LA. Um, so now here to be this year, but now we could still back. get the battle of Roman and rock in theory, even though I don't think we're going there anymore just because they haven't really done anything. Cause it'd be in Florida. This year, right? This year. Because or, or hear me out here. We just right. let Roman just run everything for another until year Hollywood. and four months. I'm with it. <laughs> until until um, Hollywood. Just have Roman you throw throw another KO match in, two KO matches at some point here and there. Run Shinsuke a little bit. Uh give Daniel Bryan a match. Throw Bring AJ. Cena back. You know, do one more. Yeah, that was throw, one thing. I was surprised to see the, Cena. Oh, Survivor Series or something. It was cool to see Cena. It, it was funny, like, how he kind of went all to show up and went into John Cena mode. So I wonder if, like, the next time we'll see Cena is in Hollywood in two years. That's hilarious if it is. Um, but It might be. I think, it, I think there's a very good chance. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, but that's the upcoming WrestleManias. Um, cool. Let, 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 let's talk a little bit. All right. All right. So uh, 
Well, let's do something fun for a second. Okay. Next three years of WrestleMania is 37, 38, 39, 37 being this year. Are we just let's the main try. Event? We'll look back on this in two to three years from now. <laughs> okay. Let's try to predict the main event of each WrestleMania from now until 39. All right. Safe bet. Goldberg in the next three somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> main event. No. Um, um, oh boy, this is hard. It um, is hard. I'll, I'll start. Me. I'll start if you guys want some time to think. I didn't even. Think, I just thought of this two seconds ago. But we I'll, doing? I'll, we we counting this year? Or? Yeah, 37, okay. 37, 38, start 39. 37, Yeah. So now, which, go, now what about now what about both nights then? <sighs> just guess one. I guess one works. Yeah. Just all right. One works, all right. This, let's do the Sunday show because that's the end of it. So that would sure. be like the main event of main events. Sure. So for this year, uh, I say Drew. Drew Goldberg. Drew it's going to be Drew Goldberg. Yeah, Goldberg has the champ walking in. Hate to say it. Yep. It's going to be Drew Goldberg. They're giving him, like we said earlier, well, you guys will hear later in the podcast. Um, yeah. They're going to give Drew a shining moment at WrestleMania. Either that or it's going to be Roman Bryan, I would say. That'd I was going to say thing. Roman Bryan, I think, is Saturday and then Drew Goldberg Sunday. <sighs> Yikes. I would flip them. Mm-hmm. I would flip them. I would too, but we don't. They won't. The, that's 37, 38. All right, Texas. Dallas. Let's try try to pr- predict. Like, we have to predict where the titles are going and all that stuff. I say, I think Roman still has the belt, and it's Roman hmm, Shinsuke. Ooh, okay. Mm, okay. No, <laughs> definitely not. They don't like Shinsuke that much. Um, I'm going to go with. All right. The, WWE champion John Cena versus Keith Lee. Ooh, that's what I'm going with. Mm. 37. Keith Lee's a Texas boy. You have a, you have a better shot at saying Shinsuke and Alistair Black than that. Hat. Jesus, <laughs> that's what I'm going with for 37 Jeez. in Texas. Um, John Cena and Keith Lee. Give me a. Uh... Oh, I like that Keith Lee pick, but I don't think that's going to happen. Neither do I. Um, I'd like to see it happen. You know what? Just just for the sake of it, give me a give me Roman Seth. Because I think it'd be an interesting idea if when Seth comes back, if he's taken a long hiatus, yeah. If he comes back as like a uh, anti-Roman kind of thing. Like, That's Roman, cool. what happened to you, man? You used to be about the business, and now you're only here about cash and checks. He's like, you gotta love the wrestling, man. That's wow. that's a that's what a Seth Rollins character would be. All so right. funny. And this is the, even the hardest one now. We're trying to predict two years I got a good. Future. I got a good one for this one. Go, go ahead. If you want to go first or last, your choice. Triple threat. Wait, where's this one again? This is, LA. Where's LA. 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 All right, give me a triple threat with Roman well, still holding the belt, still holding oh. the belt <laughs> of Roman <laughs> Reigns, The Rock, and John Cena. Rock all three Johnson. WWE yes, Hollywood that, superstars. I, I yes, would replace that's what Roman I was gonna with think the too. Miz. Oh God! <laughs> oh, it's Miz, Rock, Cena, calling back to Mania. Gets to cash in finally. Miz finally cashes in. Oh my god! Oh, no, um, I'm not predicting that. I, that's funny though. I like that. Um, I think Rock's in main event of 39. I really do. Yeah, it makes the most sense. I think that's the year they finally put him in the hall. Okay. Thing. If Rock isn't gonna go at 39, <laughs> though, right? If he doesn't, yeah. John Cena, Roman Reigns needs to in a championship retirement match. If Cena Take doesn't win. He has to retire. Oh, take my money. That and at really that point, good. you could even let's say Cena is still tied with Ric Flair, or at that like you could say he's um yeah you could say he's going for his he's going for his one last belt. You could even yeah. have Cena return at the Rumble that year, have him and win the it, Rumble. That'd be kind yep. of cool, actually. And then I like how we're picking yeah. Cena to be in the main event. This is awesome. <laughs> it just makes sense with Hollywood, honestly. It does, right? Yeah. Oh mm-hmm. man, I, I gotta pick mine for 39. I literally have Undertaker Steve Austin. Undertaker oh, Sting. Yeah, yeah. Rock, <laughs> rock, rock Stone Cold. Oh, rock man. Austin four. <laughs> um, with Hogan as a referee. I just it's very hard, very, very hard. I'm gonna go with Finn Balor. Mm. <laughs> I don't know what he's gonna do. Um <laughs> 
Finn Balor. We finally get the Finn care uh Seth Rollins rematch I'm, from I'm gonna Silver go with Slam that. Five I'm going to go with ago. that retirement match thing that Jesse okay. was talking about. Finn's the champ. The person he's facing, though, AJ Styles. Mm. Yes. I think AJ's going to be retired by then, honestly. I, I That'd think, be sad. That's so sad. I know. He, he, he's in his last run, and so is Daniel Bryan. But that was just a little mm-hmm. bit of fun, just to add a little more beef to this. Um, beef. Uh, beef. Beef. Um, but that that does it. Uh, oh, no more th- <laughs> the... oh wow, you're right. I should have done on. that first. This, this is stupid. Um, all right, so <laughs> another last thing of breaking news: the superstar spectacle is coming. It's a bunch of like Indian superstars and stuff. Um, I don't have any other info on this. I just saw the graphic. Isn't it, where, like, isn't it, at, the, isn't it at the Thunderdome though? It's at the Thunderdome, but it must be like all like Indian fans then. I guess. <laughs> Because they were planning to do a know, show man. in India for the longest time, and I guess they can't get out there because of you know COVID. No. So I guess they're flying as many of them in because there are um, people in the graphic who I don't recognize. Yeah, there's uh, Indus Share, those are the two guys who leaked um, Keith Lee winning the match at the Great American Bash or whatever. Wow, um, those are the two guys that the face paint on their heads. There's Jinder okay. on it. Oh. Um, mm. Ric Flair's on it though. Ric Flair in his robe is on in it. prime Ric Flair. Like oh we're talking like two, we're God. talking yes. like WrestleMania twenty two money in the bank. Match. One, one more, one more match. match. Rick versus Jinder in the main event. It's happening. Oh god. Jinder um, Triple H. That main event. <laughs> that did. That was a show. Um, the Bollywood Boys are on there. Then there's like Robert Roode and like Ricochet. And... Weird. AJ's on there too. Somewhere How sad is it that Ricochet is? <laughs> thrown in the I know. with like Robert Roode. They, they might Jinder. run back Jinder and AJ because AJ's one that beat Jinder for the title so they might run that back and get the Oh, revenge. give him his win. Give him his oh, win. Oh my god. They might do that. That'll get Dante's rocks off for sure. We know and, that. And this is like a Tuesday night too at like 8 o'clock. Weird. Very it's random. Weird. But hey, if, if if this leads to NXT um, India or whatever they're planning to do with that and they expand the market to India and get more wrestlers from there to come over to the US and vice awesome. versa. Cool, that's awesome. The more talent, the better. But but it's just funny how they're doing like an India like centered show at like East Coast time. Weird, right? Isn't it like? Wouldn't it be like five a.m. there? Yeah, no one like something like that. Yeah, I'll I'll give it a watch (laughs) to see what's going on with it. But um, yeah, yeah, all right, that's all we got. Let's watch the rest of the episode. Yeah, where we did where we didn't know that this was a thing. <laughs> yeah, so th- 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 this actually makes up for the lack of outside the ring news that right. we didn't have. So stay tuned for the rest of the episode. That's continuing right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Sports Department Podcast, the first wrestling recap episode of 2021, and honestly, the first episode on the Sports Department Podcast because. We had the name change and all that stuff for all the people who don't listen to the other stuff and just listen to this. Uh, they're weird. Listen to the other ones too. But welcome back. We're back. It feels good to be back. Stephen Clark with Justin Valentovic and Jesse Norman here to break down everything inside and outside of the ring in WWE. So, fellas, before we get into all that nonsense, how you doing today? Good, good. You know, we've been just pounding away, you know, some NBA, a little NHL, mostly NFL podcast. You know, wrestling took a little bit of a break, a little over... Close to a month, I'd say almost. Cause yeah, because we, we we dipped out around Christmas time, and it's almost a month since then, which is insane. But new year, new podcast, and we're here to talk some wrestling. Yes, sir. It feels good. It feels good. Jesse, how you doing? Um, I've just been told Ben Roethlisberger wants to come back, so <laughs> he does. they're optimistic he'll come back. back. They're optimistic. Don't, they don't want think, him to come back. God. Don't think that was the word that you would use to describe it. Oh. But. Thank God James Harden is a Brooklyn net. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank yeah, God. Least, least well, he, he wants to, Ben wants to honor the contract and play it out. He wants to good earn it. Oh, yeah. He step. just wants to honor that 30, that like $38 million contract <laughs> that he's getting. He wants to earn every last dime oh, of that contract before every he goes. Wants to, wants to give every last. Oh, God. No, go back to when you were talking to Barkey's Pouncy and said you didn't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Please. Remember that, Ben. Remember the interceptions. Oh, remember the one. Remember all the bad things. Um, but yeah, that, please, that's news coming out of football. Leave. Deshaun Watson wants out of Houston too. But that's a podcast for another day. Um, probably, honestly, we'll talk about that in the recap of the divisional round. So 
Yeah. Stay tuned to that. That's coming really soon. But we're here to talk about wrestling. And before we go inside the ring, we always start outside of the ring. And some sad news happened about a month ago now, a little less than a month, that we didn't get to touch on just because we were on our little hiatus. We took our little break, like Justin said, too. Gone for about a month. And um, Brody Lee, Luke Harper, John Huber, whatever you want to call him, he sadly passed away um, the day after Christmas, I believe it was. And we have to just spend a little bit of time talking about him and all he's done for the industry as a whole and what he's meant to like all the wrestlers that are currently wrestling and future wrestlers to come. Cause he was a class act. I've heard plenty of stories recently about how great of a father he was and just a great human being overall. And I just want to get your input on what he meant to the wrestling business and your thoughts on this sad situation. Yeah. He seems to be one of the nicest guys in wrestling from all accounts, you know, wrestling, they're always on the road, you know, maybe they're doing some, things you know not staying faithful or whatnot with their family but it always seemed like he cared about his family he was you know his family was number one so priorities were definitely in the right direction and he cared about his co-workers also and he left an impact on basically everywhere he's been wwe AEW, you know the independence even and you know he'll be missed yeah um great guy like uh like justin said everybody said incredible stories about him um good for WWE and AEW to not bicker or anything during this time or worry about, you know, their petty rivalry or whatever. They both came out, both did tributes. Um, both were very good, very well received. Um, and yeah, I mean, the saddest thing is just knowing um, not necessarily that the wrestler is gone, but the person is gone uh, and the father figure is gone for his kids. Exactly. But um. I know his kids are in good care because he has a great wife there too. And AEW and the cons and Cody are doing a good job. They already signed his son to a futures contract once he's 18. If he really wants to join professional wrestling, he already has a contract lined up, which is a great, great thing to do. But um, it, it's just sad because I feel like this was like the prime of his like career wise too. Because this Brody Lee character in um, AEW is honestly besides when the white family first debuted the best thing that he's done throughout his whole career and well, that's the thing even like when he was luke harper like he was probably the second most entertaining and best out of the wyatt family you know he had the most he had the most success by out far. of any of them like you know yeah braun's been universal champion but that was just you know by well, default if we're being honest but like yeah. he earned the intercontinental title you know when they were tag champs also he earned that um yeah, it's sad that played the huge part in the Viper and the family storyline well, that, too. That's and the that, thing that should have been a triple threat. Still been a triple like threat people still day. say, everybody says should have been a triple threat. And a lot of people wanted Harper to be the one that got over out that of that. Would have been awesome. It. And the yeah, fact that uh, he not even Wyatt, you know, and then the Bludgeon Brothers was just dumb in WWE. So to be able to leave, go to EW, kind of rebuild himself, you know, in the Dark Order and whatnot was just great for him to revive his career somewhere else and just shows how creative and well he was in the ring. Yeah. You can't really blame the bludgeon brothers on, I Him. feel like WWE because just, or that because Rowan got hurt at that SummerSlam and that kind of just like halted their momentum and whatever. But what are you going to do that? That's like, yeah, first they were just destroying everybody. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but I want to touch on what Jesse said about the tribute shows. Like the AEW tribute show was just, phenomenal like they dedicated all two hours of the show to him every member of the dark order was basically in every match representing him the emotions were all out on the table it didn't matter if you were a face it didn't matter if you were a heel you were just celebrating the life of brody and then the video package they played at the end with like current wwe guys in there like rollins becky lynch the new day cesaro a bunch of his buddies i'm glad they put him in the package because that just shows his life it shouldn't be like jesse said too it's, or just I forgot which one of you guys said it. It shouldn't be about AEW versus WWE when something this serious happens in life. And WWE wound up putting up videos too, like within the coming weeks. And they put up the nice graphic for him that obviously they didn't have to do, but they did because it's the right thing to do. And, and rivalries between companies is stupid in general. So it's just nice to see him get recognition for the guy, the wrestler, the person that he was in general. But any final thoughts on this or you guys want to move on? Uh, it was just a nice bow that they, AEW kind of retired that version of the TNT championship, kind of go out that way and they're just going to redesign it and whatnot. And then, you know, honestly good. that they're gonna redesign. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of silver lining of that too, unfortunately, but it was all yeah. the cons did a great job. And also, you know, they're going to honor and help his family too. Like I, I assume they're going to pay out the remainder of his contract to him. Like they'll be taken care of. Yeah. So, to be with AEW might have been 
better at the time, unfortunately, because I feel like they'll actually take care of his family. I agree. I 100% agree with that. But yeah, let's move, yeah, let's move on to a little lighter news in this uh, um, in this matter. Um, there's not much outside the ring news, but there's just rumors going around that AJ Styles is looking for a WrestleMania opponent, and he's a veteran, a well-respected guy in the locker room. Uh, gets a lot of praise from Vince McMahon. He's one of the top guys in the business and in, in the industry in general, and he wants to face. Triple H at WrestleMania. I need to get your opinions on this. Do you guys want to see this? Do you not want to see this? Is this two old guys going at it? Or um, I'd like to see it. Um, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters if it's two old guys. You gotta want to see it. Um, this is. I think you since know, AJ's come to WWE, he's made a point of facing making the guys that everybody said they wanted to see him yeah. face. Like he's he did made, the Cena yeah. thing right off the bat. Like the one yeah. guy let well. Technically, the two guys left is Michaels and Triple H, yep. but Michaels isn't coming back. Yeah, he's making up for lost time for when he was, you know, out in TNA and all the dream. It's literally Mr. TNA versus Mr. WWE at this point, even more so than The Undertaker. And, you know, The Undertaker match, it is the Boneyard was phenomenal, but, you know, it just wasn't an actual match. Yeah. But Triple H would be able to carry an actual match, which would be great to see. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I no, hope so. Well, 2020 too. was the first year we haven't seen him in the ring. And we already saw him in the ring yeah. this Monday night, so we'll get to that. But no, I wanted to. I, I, you guys said. I'm Mr. all for it. Mr. WWE. It's just like a clash of like our childhoods, like growing up. Like I used to watch TNA too when it was really good in the late 2000s and all that Across stuff. the line. Yeah. That was, that, that was the heyday of TNA. Yeah. Yeah, before it was. Hogan, Hogan took over and all that <laughs> stuff. Um, Hogan. Now, this is great. Um, Triple H can still go. He's in phenomenal shape. AJ Styles is probably right at the end of the peak of his prime, I would say, just because he's just been doing it for so good for so long. But He's I'm Lakers LeBron at this point. He can still deliver, but you don't know how much Honestly. time he has left. Exactly. Exactly like LeBron. Uh, yeah, great. and he's he said he's almost done. Like, he, he's mentioned numerous times that, like, he's pretty – he's getting pretty close to the end. Yep. So, so, I think it, it makes sense um, – his many opponents have been who he he's gone against Jericho uh, McMahon, Jericho Shane, Mc, oh McMahon, McMahon <laughs> Nakamura, yeah. um, Orton. But he obviously did the Cena, yeah, he did the Cena matches. He's done all those. So I think I think if this is potentially his last Mania or second to last Mania, it makes sense uh, yeah, for him to go against I, Triple H. I, I think so too. And that really does it for outside the ring. There's other little nonsense stuff that's just not worth talking about. Um, we got what we needed to talk about with Brody Lee, and we had to talk about a little bit with HS Styles and Triple H there. But um, let's move into Monday Night Raw. Um, there was news that broke like right before Raw on Monday that Drew McIntyre came down with COVID, and that's big because he is the current WWE champion, and he is starting a feud with everyone's favorite WCW superstar, Goldberg. Hey, oh. What do you think I'll say, Jeff Jarrett? No, Sting, but you know, he's oh. over in AEW. <laughs> um, I would no. much rather see Sting, Drew. So yeah. would I. So would I. And I just need um your opinions, uh, your takes on Goldberg coming back again and putting himself right in the title picture. Goldberg's the new Brock Lesnar. Just Damn. 20 years older, if we're being honest. He comes in, takes the belt, holds it for a while, not on TV, comes in, loses the belt, goes away, comes back. This is the new Brock Give me Lesnar. Brock instead. Like, I just, if Goldberg, I know Goldberg's on a contract to fight the two matches a year and all that stuff. Yeah, but one of them supposed to be a Saudi show, and they don't have Saudi shows, so they well, have to make up for they have to make up that contract somehow. There you go. Yeah, he, like last year, he won the Universal Title from Fiend, and then Strowman beat it for him at WrestleMania. His two matches, then he was done. The year before, I forgot. I think it was the Undertaker match and like the Dolph Ziggler match at SummerSlam. Um, but it's just enough's enough at this point like you have such a talented roster jesse brings up every once in a while how alistair black is just sitting in catering doing nothing oh. and he's who, who? oh my god there's only an 11 there's oh. there's only an 11 year difference between goldberg and brock lesnar that's yeah. terrifying wow. Even brock coming back at this point would have been fine for drew but back to my point there's just so Goldberg's in his 60s he's only 54 he's in great shape though you gotta give him that yeah. um but, God, if he was never the pre-order bonus, we'd never have this. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> UK like fifteen or whatever that yeah, was. That's basically what it was. That was the trend of once that whoever the pre-order bonus was was coming back for another run. Then Goldberg just kept coming back. God, angle, yeah, yeah. angle, yeah. Sting, angle, Mysterio, Sting. 
Oh my God, you're right. Good yeah, thing we stopped was, making was, the games for a little bit. <laughs> so I don't need any of these other guys to come back. Um, but just give up and coming guys a title opportunity. That's all I'm asking for here. I'm not a fan of the match, if you can tell um, by my tone this whole time. But they yeah, shouldn't Jesse, take they shouldn't take the belt. They shouldn't take the belt off too. They <laughs> really too. shouldn't. This, Unless they're going to try to have the Goldberg. The funny thing is, we're. I was going to say, like, if we're, we're all we're. You go. You you no you you you. No, you, you, I insist. Just, just no. someone go one at a time. Fine. Basically, ah, Lee. <laughs> not like we did radio for four years or anything. <laughs> Jesse and I didn't do that many shows together, believe it or not. We did like the first few, and then he, you know, we, we just kind of yeah. split ways. Um, if they take the belt off Drew, the whole intention is to put it back on him at Mania because if they have fans at Mania, it's really just to give him his coronation in front of people, which he never got because of last year's COVID. They, at- they kind of did this already, though, with yes, Orton. No, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jesse. Um, Bar get like getting out of the match and everything and and all that. The storyline isn't good. Like no. the storyline itself isn't good. Didn't go the just whole literally just the come whole back. Orton feud. The whole Orton feud was like Drew protecting legends and like respecting legends, while Orton didn't. And then Goldberg came out and was like, "You don't respect these legends, Drew." And it was like, <laughs> uh, he kind of does. What? Yeah. What? And then he was like, you don't, you don't, you think all these people are washed up and old. And it's like, well, yeah, because they kind of are. But, but it's like, when, when, when did you thanking them? But like, when did Drew say this? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> when did Drew words. become the heel in this situation? Just putting... Drew became, like, literally, this is, this is playing Drew as the heel. Which is like what? It's just it's just not, Goldberg CT. Itself. It's Goldberg CT kicking in. Yeah. He, I know. He, he bangs his head on the door every time he comes out like loves concussing himself that was that was so bad undertaker and <laughs> golly um but no goldberg is back the match is still advertised for the rumble on january 31st we'll see if it stands depends on mcintyre if he's gets cl- clear so monday when they announce, i would assume he has to why is my calendar coming up 14 days so unless monday his, unless his symptoms are not in. bad so, so monday was the 11th two weeks but yeah the 25th which means Drew would have literally yeah. So Drew, six days before Mania, Drew <laughs> might not even be on the go home show then. They're not gonna they're not gonna build to it anyways. Probably it's Goldberg. Not. He's not gonna show no. up that much. Yeah, there's yeah. Like Goldberg's not gonna be there. If they just give Goldberg the title because he can't compete. Oh my god! I'll be a very salty boy. Everyone will hear about <laughs> it on this podcast. But um, that's enough talking about Goldberg. I don't want to talk about him anymore for the rest of the podcast. So we're gonna move on to something even more stupid. Um, Goldberg. I wish. I wish it was Gilbert versus McIntyre. <laughs> um, so last week on Raw, well, two weeks ago now, um, it was Raw Legends Night, and Ric Flair kind of cost Charlotte the match by accident. It happens. What are you going to do? Charlotte did Rick to get out of her face. Whatever. Rick comes back this Monday night on Raw, but it's not Legends Night this week. And he's like, and Charlotte's shocked because he yelled at Rick and all that stuff. But, you know, Rick's just an old goofball that's yeah, probably drunk half the time anyways. So he comes back. Three out quarters and- of the time. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um and he kind of calls charlotte the match and lacey evans just gets the pin and he leaves with lacey evans like is he trying to get with lacey at his old age i don't, I don't know he might have to pop a couple blue pills to be able to withstand that but um man it's it's just weird they don't know what to do with charlotte and they shouldn't have brought her back in should have waited till the rumble that's all this comes down to i just don't yeah. like they it. needed the they needed the pop factor of oscar's partner that I I mean that was it. Once um, again, there's so many. My, I I I guess I think Charlotte's gonna win the Rumble. I, I, I think that's. Yeah. I I think that's it. I think Charlotte wins the Rumble, and then they're gonna do the whole. Um, I don't know if you remember when John Cena and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, were the tag champs going together. For, uh, the, the the tag champs. They're and gonna they were do gunning the same for each other. Yep. With Oscar and Charlotte. Yep. But it was supposed to be we're that gunning makes- for each other, but also. Everybody else is gunning for us, so you watch my back, I'll watch your back. That mania was about ten years and ago, so it's okay to recycle the. Uh, but I was gonna say they, they do that yeah. so often, where tag teams just like split up like that, like makeshift mm-hmm. tag teams split yes. up and wind up fighting yes, each other. Yes, they mania. do. Like it was like a Cena Batista one in like 08 too. I think they were tag teams. Jericho yep. Styles. Yes. Jericho Styles did something like that. Yeah, they were a team. They were Y two AJ and then Shane McMahon Y2AJ. and the Miz even recently. Kevin like Owens, too. Chris Jericho, which was great, but yeah, that, they that's still the best that. one. Um, yeah, but weird, weird stuff. Don't want to spend any more time on that either because Raw was weird as a whole again because that's just how Raw is these days. Word. 
Um, Triple H and Orton. So the, the Raw actually started with Triple H coming out, Orton interrupting him and challenging Triple H to the Legend Killer Invitational or whatever the hell it was. Should this been on H. Legend Nights? Um, no, this wasn't. This is was the week. No, after. shouldn't it have been though? It should have. Yeah, it wasn't because I think this is just in, in there time. just because uh, Drew and Orton was scheduled. Yeah, for later that they night. Need, they needed filler. They needed filler. Triple H didn't do much anyway, so it was fine. Um, but later in the night, Triple H accepted or whatever. He comes out, hands all taped up, whatever. They just start brawling throughout, like the, around the commentary table and stuff. Triple H brings out brings out his sledgehammer, goes into the ring with it, and all that stuff. And all of a sudden, he looks at it and it's on fire. And we've been seeing a lot of fire on Raw lately, so you know what that means. The lights start to go out. They go out all the way. Then all of a sudden, Alexa Bliss is back. Who? people who just um, didn't see Raw for like three weeks ago now. Um, Orton um, apparently burned her too. So she was back and then she threw a fireball at Randy Orton and Raw cut to black. The end thoughts on what's going on here. Fiend's coming back soon. Yeah. He's coming back at Rumble. Yeah. Number 30. Oh, I wish Fiend would win, win the Rumble. If he comes, he has He's to not come back. Be at, in oh, he should. He'd have to come I back at 30 and clear in. house. It would be cool if it was Firefly mm-hmm. Bray. Like Orton just in the middle of the ring and Firefly yeah. Bray comes I saw out. somewhere it's like they should do the three phases of Bray where it's like Firefly Bray, Eater of Worlds Bray, and then oh, the last like one be the, fiend, be the Fiend Bray. He enters, he enters three times. That would be funny. Honestly, <laughs> like having like one fi- like, like one fifteen and like 30. Bro, I'm just very scared yeah. for this rumble because there's no fans and they can just plug in fake yep. cheers and stuff to whoever yep. wins. And they like, they, yeah, they, here's my yeah. thing. Ugh, do I'm we scared. get like the typical returns like we normally do or not because there's no fans, so they don't feel like they have to do it then? Less than normal. I, would I say. think they enjoy doing it. Yeah. Mm. I think, yeah, I agree less than normal, but still, um, I you. still think we're going to get, I think, I still think this is when Edge comes back. Ooh. I think he kind of. Mm. I think he kind of has to. Um, I think we see more NXT. Or he comes back at Rumble. Chamber. Yeah, mm. a little more NXT. That's what I think color. for the women's one. The women's, I think, is going to be pretty much no returns. Yeah. Except just, maybe, like, McCool. Yeah. Uh, I think McCool just actually came down with COVID. Ooh. I saw online earlier today. Stay away from, Ooh, never stay, mind. Stay, away from, not... stay, stay away from Taker. He's a little old. He is uh, a little old. <laughs> uh, but I'm actually going to – we'll get the Rumble predictions in two weeks from now or whatever. But I'm actually going to take someone I from NXT. Rum- to, I love the Rumble. Me too. I'm taking someone from NXT from the women's side to win the Rumble, who hasn't been around lately. You guys can probably guess who it is. But, um, no. yeah. Um, no? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, that does it for Raw. Um, cool. It, it was okay. What are you going to do? It's an average Raw. Um, some highs, some lows, whatever. Uh, NXT, the best night of the week for wrestling, Wednesday night. And I'm going to start off with Zia Lee and Boa and what the hell is going on in this Chinese stable they have going on. Um, it's just like they're possessed almost. They were training. They had all these vignettes, really good vignettes, actually, of them training in like this Chinese dungeon or whatever. And then they have like this demonic figure, kind of reminds me of like Bray Wyatt when he first debuted, just sit on the ramp and watch Harper and Rowan do all the dirty work for them in the ring. And I just don't know what to make of it yet. It's very intriguing, which I like for like in like undercard story. But uh, they're going for some supernatural a little stuff bit, right? here. A little yeah. Bit. It, it, it's yeah. fun. They're getting a little kooky. It's it's interesting, but I hope it works out well because yeah. they don't have a good track record with this. Yeah, I just don't know I where it doesn't lead. flop. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, yeah, where are they going like, with this? Because the like, EO is taking over the women's division. It's not really a competition for Zia Lee unless they build up Zia Lee really well in the next six months or so. I can see if they consistently make her look yeah. strong. That's unless cool. they make like whatever like force is behind her, like just makes her a tank and unstoppable. That'd then maybe. Cool. That'd you know, play. and Boa's not really been around too much ever since he's showed up in NXT. He's not, not well known to even like hardcore NXT guys. They don't really know who he is that much. But if if the North American title run, or maybe they add someone else to the stable and a tag team title run comes out of this for them, cool. Yeah, okay with it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything else to add to that. It's just it's something just, fun to watch and it's interesting. different. And I hope it goes well. Makes sense. Best words right there. Yeah, Justin. agreed. I, I think if there was if there was some place to do it, I'm glad it's an NXT. I have yeah. more faith in it there yeah. than if this was on Raw. 
Yeah, um, me too. Um, all right, uh, let's switch to the Dusty Cup because Dusty Cup is always a fun time. I love tournaments as it is, whether it's King of the Ring or whatever, the number one contenders tournament or so, or this one in two, the Dusty Cup. I really like King Dusty of the Ring. Cup. It, um, that'd be nice, right? Yeah. But when, when was last well, they still have King Corbin. When was the last time the King Corbin? Is that, like, is that like two years running now at this point? I feel like it's like a while now. I gotta look up like when the last a long time was. It feels like it's Watch, going it probably on hasn't there. even been that long. Probably like 2018, I'm gonna say. Yeah, I'll look That's it up. I guess. Okay, we well, can keep talking. Yeah, up? yeah, I'll um just go through some of the matches. King of the Ring was in 2019. That's it. That's it. That's hasn't it. even been two years. Yeah, it was in uh, August of 2019. A year and a half. So end of 2019. A year and a half. I don't like that. Like, not even. Not even a year and a half. Like a year and a couple months. That's yeah. ridiculous. Don't like that. No. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, that's Crap. insane. Um, we're stuck with King Corbin then for a little while then. Um, it works. What are you going to do? Yeah, it was a four-year gap between that one and the last one. And then it was, yeah. Who was yep. the one before that? Seamus? Barrett. Barrett. Oh, Barrett. Oh, Wow! Wow! That was wow. What the, well. That was like King in the Ring events. I'm on, not winners, but the last event was 2015. But like. no, you're right. It was Barrett. I remember that. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh, Dusty Cup. Anyways, uh, Grizzled Young Veterans defeats Ever Rise. Cool. Don't need to touch on that that much. Undisputed Era looking back, being strong as ever. They beat Brizanko. Kind of expected that one. But now we have to talk about the new debuting guys. MSK, the Rascals from TNA, showed up and still in their same old colors that represent weed. So at least they're kind of <laughs> keeping their old gimmick a little bit. Um, they beat a uh, makeshift team of Atlas and Swerve Scott. Cause these guys are kind of feuding at the moment. So that's cool. They looked very impressive to me. Um, this is the only match I wanted to talk about from the Dusty You think Cup. they win it then? I think there's a very good chance they win it. Very good chance just to get these new guys. Um, some to build leverage, some something. momentum for them. Yeah. 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 Um, they're, they're good. I have nothing else to say about it. They were just good. It was entertaining. It was fun. Um, uh, it looks great. There's a women's Dusty Cup coming up too. That's for cool. The first time, like that. Yeah, I think it's gonna start mm-hmm. after this one ends, so they probably just don't get it mixed up. Plus, it just adds to more stuff to put on TV. But it's just a lot of makeshift teams. But what are you calling now? Do? Raquel That's and Dakota happens. are gonna win it. Let's go. That's my girl, Raquel. I would Let love if they they should strap the belts onto Raquel and Dakota. The tag yes, titles. They tag teams. Yes, they, they should, should. be tag in NXT titles, to yeah. begin with. They, they should be in NXT. No, agreed. And maybe this is when we see the move, finally. Honestly, I th- I would say that the winners of the tournament probably get a tag title opportunity. Get a tag so, title thing. That's what I'm thinking. That's the only way go. it makes sense. And that takeover, probably the WrestleMania one. There you go. There's yeah, one of your takeover matches. There. And then and then if you're doing Asuka Charlotte as the, as the Mania thing, because Charlotte's just won, have them lose the night before. There you go. There you go. Oh. Perfect. Just they to hire us right now. Um, I did it for MSK them. looked great. <laughs> we did it for them. MSK looked great. I'm glad to see them in NXT. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about Pete Dunn and Finn Balor. Finn Balor is basically said, "Oh, I'm done with Kyle O'Reilly. I beat that little guy." Um, moving on, Pete Dunn uh, looks like that's the next challenger to Finn Balor. I'm all for this. We've never seen this match before in WWE anywhere. They kind of. Bally got called up. Pete Dunne started getting like signed and all that stuff, and then vice versa. The NXT UK started all that stuff. So they haven't really crossed paths that many times. Um, do you guys want to see this match? Because I, I really yeah. do. No, yeah, give it to me. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah. Pete, Pete Dunne is like at this point probably my favorite wrestler in NXT. Ooh. Um, wow. Yeah, I I love Pete Dunne. He's. I guess so Pat good. helped him get um, to that top tier for you. Yeah. Oh, definitely. It was it was yeah. definitely Pat. Um, no, this is great. Uh, the only thing, my only critique of it is how long are they going to keep carrying Cross out of the title hunt? Just because I think it's a little interesting that like his whole thing when he was coming back was like I'm coming back for the belt. You like, think I'm they take? Back from you think NXT. they have? You think they have Pete Dunn take it off of him, off of Finn? He gets eaten by Cross, and then we get Finn cross eventually we're bound to get finn we're about to bound to get demon finn versus cross i don't know i don't know if finn cross is the end goal because i don't know how much longer finn's gonna be in nxt 
Ooh. I would think it would be the opposite. I think Cross would be in NXT for a much shorter time than Balor. I think Cross is going to be one of those guys that everybody thinks he's going to get moved up so quickly and that he doesn't. Like, Undisputed Era. Like, everybody was like, oh, Era's going to get called up so quickly. And now <laughs> it's like, oh, are they even going to get called up? Um, at this, at this I think point, I, I Yeah. I think, I, think, I think Cross is going to end up having a run. Um, not like – I think much more similar to, um, to like, Bobby Roode and Drew McIntyre as opposed to, like, Keith Lee where Keith Lee I, got I, hot and got pulled up very quickly. I think they're going to keep Cross down there for a while. Yeah, I think Cross runs the summer with the belt. Like, I just think that it's going to be his summer. He'll do the May, June, July, maybe a little bit into August, get mm-hmm. called up around SummerSlam like Bobby Roode did too. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. no, NXT was great. Uh, I love the Dusty Cup, like I said earlier. It's, it's great. Um, new matches next week. I think there were some on Friday they did too on 205 Live. I think Drake Maverick and Killian Dane advanced or something. Why Killian Dane was on 205 Live beats me, but um, they did that. <laughs> he, he didn't, he, he's definitely not 205. No, he's not. I think the hair he would definitely, have He is should have like one pounds. arm and one leg tied by If he's 205, I'm 205. Maybe. If he's 205, I'm Yeah. Um, that does it for NXT. Let's move into Friday Night SmackDown. And we started off the show with um, the 4K 8K cameras that we've seen on uh, Fox NFL games that they do right after the touchdowns. Yeah, and it's just a really nice so, touch. Those were super, super trippy. They, like, they were it, clean. It, yeah, no, it was, but it was just, whoa. Yeah, like, yeah. I remember, like, it looks like zone, too I, clean. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, weird. Almost it's, too clean. It's weird right? how clean it looks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, it looked phenomenal. I'm glad they incorporated those because it is under the Fox brand. Cool. It looks great. It adds to the quality of it. I remember the first time seeing it on like Red Zone when the Fox game popped up. I was like, what is this? Yeah, it's, then, it's 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 a little trippy at first. Like, did I just get like a free like upgrade on my TV or something? Like, no, it was the camera. But um, no, that's great. And um, to add to a little bit more great stuff on SmackDown, Nakamura is basically back to being a face on SmackDown, which is fun. He did his little face run when he came up. Didn't work out too hot. Did his heel run. It was eh. And now he's basically back after his impressive performance in the gauntlet match last week to being a face. He has his own theme song back, and he got a big victory over Jey Uso. Do you guys prefer having Nakamura as the face, or do you guys want to see him back to being like the dirty heel again? Tough one. Yeah, I think the dirty heel went on way yes. too long. It dragged on. I thought it was cool at first, but God, they lo- they made that go on for what years now? Two, like, three. Nakamura's been a heel 34, for since thirty four. Since thirty four. Yeah, years. when he first assaulted yeah. AJ's nuts, basically. He had an obsession with yeah. his nuts. Yeah. With that tear, with that bad mania match, I don't yeah, care what anybody right. says. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. They held back. It was not a good. Was not a good mania match. They held back. The- so much and then the following matches the, also were one wasn't bad. like they got better every time yes they got better yes. every time the last man standing match in south i think, good. It I think was, money in the bank wasn't was their, bad either yeah and they were all fine but like it's it wasn't what you thought an aj Agreed. nakamura match was gonna be at that Agreed. time um but yeah no i think i think nakamura's had like two or three years like not off but he's had a lot of time out of the main event and a lot of time in yeah, the tag time. team it's division time. and such. You got to give him something. Yeah, and I, that's what SmackDown has been doing lately with Owens, with Nakamura, and we'll talk about it in a little bit with Apollo Crews too. They're getting these guys who haven't been really used on television and they're getting them into these main story roles. So it's good to see, you know, like the baton being passed around a little bit and not just all focused on one guy on SmackDown. So that's great. Um I like it though. I like he had a big win over Jey Uso. Like I said, it, he's looking good. And honestly, I'm going to say this now: he's my dark horse to win the Rumble. My dark I was going to, I, I, I was going to say that. The only thing is, he already won a Rumble. He's won one already. I that think they won't give him. I don't think they want to put like only the elite of the WWE have won, won it twice. two Rumbles, and yeah, I don't think um, they consider Shinsuke there. I think if a Raw superstar wins. Shinsuke could win the chamber and then that goes on to uh do Mania. WrestleMania. That's if Big E plans fall through and whatever they're gonna do with Daniel Bryan too. That's another rumor too. Yeah. 
But um, I'm leaning a lot more towards Big E too, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, uh, let's continue with SmackDown. We only have like six minutes left, so uh, let's get this done. Uh, Ding Dong Hello, a new show. I uh, barely hosted. Bad. It was weird. I didn't like it. Uh, I don't know about you guys if you saw it or not, but nope. it was very cringy. Um, not a fan. Good attempt. Uh, I bad, feel like they don't they don't really know what they're doing with Bailey now. Not with the Sasha. Th- yeah, thing. it's sad. Done. It's sad. Um, move her to Raw at this point or something. Do a little shake up trade. Yeah, get whatever. her get her and Sasha away from each other. Let her do her own yes. thing. Keep I her agree. heel. Turn her face. Do whatever you want to do. Do whatever. But... Yeah. Um, Keeper, Cesaro get, and Brian. Get her off SmackDown. Yeah, Cesaro and Brian put on a great match. Nothing more to say there. Um, two of the best. Cesaro's even getting used now on SmackDown in a singles role because Nakamura is back to being a face. So it's just good on SmackDown. Everybody's getting used that's very talented that usually didn't get used before. So that's great. Um, and then this is a big talking point for SmackDown for me. The new Apollo Crews. Um, last week, uh, Apollo Crews lost to Big E and kind of, you know, got mad and all that stuff. And I'm talking smack after Paul Heyman talked some sense into him. It was like, you know, you, you got to be tough. You got to be this like, yeah, you have to make people respect you kind of like the Roman Reigns talking away. And it looks like and backstage on SmackDown this week, we saw Roman and Apollo talking. And this might be planting the seed for Big E and um, Roman in the future. If Roman costs Big E the championship in their title match next week that they have, Um it's very possible that this is starting to plant the seeds with Roman and Big E, but I like that Apollo Crews is being used in a different way here too. I really yeah. do. No, I enjoy it. It's good. Yeah. Apollo's good in the ring. He always has been. It's been the problem of he doesn't what have to do with him. His character yeah. is that he goes around and he, he has no motivation. He just smiles a lot. He has no motivation. Which what, that's what that's what Finn did. That's what they had Finn do smiled. on the roster too. Was just he walked around and smiled, smiled showed off his six pack. Did it put his arms in the air? Did a backflip? <laughs> Did a backflip <laughs> back here and there? Um, but yeah, no, it's cool to see Apollo being used, not just smiling for once to having that mean mug. I like it. I like it. I'm not, if that means he wins the IC title next week, cool. I'm with it too. If that moves Big E to the main event picture, even better. So that's great. And the last thing on SmackDown throughout the whole night, um, they've been changing the ma- like the stipulation to the match. It was like a no DQ match, and then Paul Heyman like changed it to a um, last man standing and. Pierce didn't sign it and Roman signed it for a last man standing. And then it was very confusing. Honestly, Pierce left the ring, pretended to hobble, said he was injured and needs a replacement for the match. Out comes Kevin Owens. We're getting Owens versus Reigns in a last man standing match, which I predicted about a month ago. About a month ago. Yeah. Cause yeah. Owens whole thing was, you can't, I'm not staying down. I'm not staying down. So um, that came true. I love it. I love, love it. it. I love really. it. I love KO and Roman always good together. Yeah, yeah, I do too. But um, as much as I love Owens, thank guys, not Adam Pierce is the thing. That's, that's the best part. That's a good thing. Um, I love Owens, which is another good thing. But you got to capitalize on what was hot at the moment of the last two weeks, and that's Nakamura. I you agree. Do, yeah. If you want to do a one off, you do. I'm really yeah. hoping they have a plan longer term for Nakamura, and I, I I hope that's that's the only reason that makes sense as to Me why too. they would give him that great gauntlet showing and then not have him in this match. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for, too. Just something in the future planned for him because literally he put on a show that had whole internet talking and he put on a great performance this week as well. And it seems like the King of Strong style, like the original NXT Nakamura is back. Got to take advantage of that. But Owens is back. It's cool. It adds to the story that, you know, can't keep him down. He got thrown off the scaffolding thing and he couldn't keep him down. He has handcuffed to a cage and got his butt beat by Roman and Jay. You can't keep him down. And we're going to see if Roman can finally keep him down at the Royal Rumble. And that does it for this week in wrestling. Um, final thoughts, what you guys thought about this week before I close it out. Just the typical build up a few weeks out from Rumble. You know, nothing crazy. You know, they're exactly. slowly going, you know, you're not going to have all mayhem two weeks out. So it's what I expected though, but it's exactly. good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I just want Rumble to be sooner. Rumble's my Me favorite too. time. Of the fact that it's literally the last day of January is insane, but that's yeah, because of NFL sucks. playoffs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's as simple as that it's between the, it's the pro bowl week and there's no pro bowl so they have no competition no exactly it, it, yep. it's always it's the always same day as the pro bowl every single year yeah um but that does it for this week in wrestling thank you guys for listening to this episode of the sports department podcast us we appreciate you guys joe and steve also appreciate you guys listening to us um make sure you guys are following our social medias on facebook twitter instagram and tiktok at department underscore pod uh, subscribe on youtube apple podcast oh it's not department underscore pod it's sports depth pod yeah something like that 
Oof. We gotta work with it. We, we got, it's in. Steve it's Pod. down below. We got. We, yeah. We just gotta work follow. With it. Just search our name. You'll find us. You gotta um, work it a little bit. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. I'm just so used to saying the old. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. Um, follow us. Subscribe to us. We have NFL divisional round recap coming up. Possibly a baseball coming up with a lot of big moves. DJ Lemayhew and um, Francisco Lindor. A lot of big New York moves. So that stuff's coming really soon. Uh, wrestling recap probably next week. We'll see what happens. And just stay tuned to all that fun stuff, and we'll see you in the next episode.